Hey, it's the Snacky Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Keisha B. And we got Tamisha Miller in the house as well. And we have Courtney. Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm good. And you, ladies? Oh, I'm doing well, Courtney. Fantastic. Thank you. And Courtney, where are you right now? I am in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. Are you in Detroit? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the temperature over there? Oh God! It went down to like thirty degrees. We were on, we were living a high for a week. We were almost at eighty one day, and then it dropped. Really? Yes, and snowed for two days. Where are you, ladies, at? Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. Yes. I'm in New York. Okay. And it's about fifty degrees over here. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm in Florida, and it's oh. seventy seven now. And today we were at a high of eighty four. I like that. Uh, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. thank you for coming on to our platform, Courtney. We appreciate you. And um, let's start from the beginning. Sure. Um, so you actually have a foundation. You have a book and everything. How did you come about your foundation? Well, it's, it's, um, it's not a foundation. Oh. It is a, it's a community. So it's called Sober Vibes. So it is a com an online community for sober, sober curious women, for anyone battling, for women who battle the disease of addiction. Um, and that came about because I got sober in 2012, August 18th of 2012. I had a decade long uh addiction to alcohol. And in my recovery, I needed something more than what was presented to me at the time. And I needed more of an empowering feeling. I'm like, you don't just get sober just to, you know, continue to be, you don't have to continue to kind of be like doom and gloom. Right. And I was looking for more and so then I went about and created what I was looking for and it has helped me continue along the way. And then of course, support and empower women, um, who are sober and sober curious and, and meeting them really at where they're at. Cause not everybody is in the same, not everybody's in the same place when they quit drinking or using drugs. Right. So it's just really meeting people with where they're at, at that present time. Okay, I love that. Uh, Thank you. I'm sorry. So, um, how many years were you actually drinking, and you know, you actually noticed that you was that like, that you had a disease or a problem? Yeah. So I was in my active addiction for ten years, and it was about so 19 I started to drink, and then you know, eventually led into there was years of drug use as well in there, but it was at 25. Then I knew I had a problem after waking up one night, you know, after a night of partying and just being like, I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to keep doing this. I know I'm going to have to live a life without alcohol eventually down the road. Um, I just didn't know when or how it was going to look like. And then by the time I turned 29, that's when it presented itself to me, like we're done because from 25 to 29, I tried to still fit alcohol into my life and it was past the point of no return. And when you get to that past the point of no return, you, you can't go back to when you were 19 years old and just having a drink or two or 21 or what, you know, where it was like innocent. Right. Um, so, so at 29, I was about six weeks shy of being 30 and I just, I had to give it up for good. I'm not a person um, who should drink alcohol. It does not end well with, for me. Right. right. Um, was anybody in your family an alcoholic as well for you to actually um, pick up a bottle <laughs> per se? Yeah. The, yeah. There was active addiction in, in my home and, you know, in, in generations of it, addiction and mental health issues ran in both sides of my family. So it, it was there, you know, and, and the thing of it is, is it was very functioning. Right. And that's what's hard. That's especially what's hard with, with alcohol, because many people are able to quote unquote function mm -hmm. and still being able to do A, B, C, and D, but like, that's it. So so yes, it was modeled to me because I'm a firm believer of, um, you know, we, we learn what we are, we are taught and shown, yes. especially in the, in the home dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Um, so um, who, is, is, is this only for a woman, for a woman's platform that you have your organization for, or is it men and female, you know? 
I, I do coach men one-on-one, but when it comes to like my Facebook group community and even to this new community that I just started within Sober Vibes, um, it is for women only. And that is just something that I started off from the beginning. Even when I participate in AA, I sat at the woman's table. I always just felt more connected and like I could be honest than if there was a male presence there. Um, so I, I, it's mainly towards women, you know, because it is very different how, how men perceive sobriety and recovery than women. And when I started this too, I saw that there was a lot of, you know, women can do it too, but there was kind of a lot of predatorial behavior with, with men and with women. And, and for a lot of women, that's it. Men are triggers for them because there's okay. been trauma through the years, you know? So it's, it's always just geared towards women. Cause I've just wanted to keep women safe and myself included. I like that. Thank you. As women, we have our own platform. Yeah, you know, and like people will be like, do men not matter? And it's like, well, of course (laughs) they do. But you go, then go start something yourself or go find, there's all men's groups and more power to that. Like sometimes I do believe that there should be a separation because again, there's going to be things that women aren't going to talk about if there's a male's presence around. And that could be the same for a man who won't openly share because there's female presence around. That's true. That's Mm -hmm. true. Um, did you get counseling um, prior to doing your organization or did you just like stop cold turkey? How did you go about that? Yeah, so I um I stopped cold turkey. Oh, I stopped wow. cold turkey. So oh, I really I good. yeah, so I, I I stopped and I really just for the first two years kind of did it by myself. Um I did try AA in the very, very beginning. But it was it was too it was too overwhelming for me. My anxiety was extremely high. I listened to a man talk about like how he had ten years, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it to day three. Like this is a lot, you know. And I had a hard time connecting with the word God, and, and God is used in that program, and I just was not there. So for the first two years, I just did it on my own, and then eventually I went back to therapy. I hired coaches. I went back to AA. I, I like to, um, I like to use different tools of help at different times. Um, and that's just how, how my personality goes. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see you said with God, do you go to church as well? Um, did that actually come into play with you as well? Well, I, I, I used to go to church every Sunday <laughs> when I was a kid. My mom took us to church every Sunday and I always felt that th- my mom always kept God um, very present. My mom was a very spiritual woman, is a very spiritual woman and always had a connection with God. I mean, my mom was the type of lady who had um, like altars and crystals and where people thought she was crazy and, and would mm-hmm. sage, use sage sticks in the early nineties. And people thought she was crazy, but like <laughs> now look at it. Right. <laughs> so, so my mom was always connected, but I think as I grew up and you know, life happens to you and experiences happen to you. I just, I lost that connection and I didn't, I didn't understand it. You know, it was always like, um, God of just thinking like right to the church. Right. But when I got sober and realized that I was more connected to a spiritual side, right? Sure, like right. My, like my church, it can be in nature. Do I respect people of, uh, I, I now can respect people of getting up like, okay, church is a sacred place for you. That's where you go to connect to your, your God, your spiritual presence. And so I respect it and understand it a lot more than what I was living right. previous to it. Right. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So you're helping women, and um, you also have a book as well, right? Yes, yes. So my book is coming out um, August 15th of 2023, but it's available for pre-order now, and it's called Sober Vibes, um, The Ultimate Guide to Helping You Thrive in the First Three Months Without Alcohol. Mm-hmm. And it's really coaching somebody those first three months of what to expect, 
There's coach tips in it. It's very interactive. You can write in there. Uh, there's journal props in there and you can write in there. I, I ask you to do homework and then you have the area and the book to write in. So it's more kind of a workbook. I like to, I like to look at it. You know, there's a lot of books out there where people tell their stories and that's great. We need more of that, but specifically for this topic, we need more, we need more of kind of like, okay, what do I expect? The how to's, you know, kind of guide me through this. So that's why I wanted to, uh, to set up the book the way that it did. And thank God for um, my publishing company who, who backed me up on that. That sounds awesome. Thank you. I like thank it. You. So it's thank exercises you. that can actually take you through it. So you really learn in steps instead of just reading for one story and you still kind of lost. This can give you kind of like a guide. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like, and even to, and I even talk about in there, like seeking out help, right? Because there's more than one ways to recover and everybody has their different um, experiences or perception of that. But it's even, it's even walking someone through like, well, okay, these are the support options you have. AA, I walk someone through that. You could seek out a coach, a therapist, you know, so, um, uh, sober support online. So I give people the option and to of, of what to expect right. and walk you through that area as well. Because it, when you walk into a meeting, into an AA meeting, it's very overwhelming and nobody's being like, okay, you're going to do this, this, and this. Right. So, and people, and people fear that and, or being like, okay, how do I even find something online? And right. so, so that's part of, the, part of one chapter that I talk about, but yeah. Right. I like that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So you do one-on-one coaching? Yes. And, yep. Um, I do. I do one-on-one coaching. Okay. And what's the process of that, you know? So the, pro- um, the process of one-on-one coaching is that you do apply for it at first, you know, cause, uh, and then we get on a consult call see if we're a good fit because I won't just take anybody because <laughs> that's a very intimate situation. And somebody might get on a call with me and be like, no, thank you. You're not my cup of tea, which is cool, you know? And so when someone signs up on a, on a one-on-one coaching process with me, I like to do eight weeks at a time because especially in, in when you're quitting drinking or in that transition, it's like 30 days. You're like, all right, cool. I got this, but I'd like to go the extra four weeks, the extra 30 days to do eight weeks, 60, 60 days close to where then it still becomes a reality to help you get you through those next 30 days, because it's very easy for your mind to start playing tricks on you to be like, well, I don't have such a problem. And then once you hit into that third month, like it's, you're pretty solid and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going and going and going. But there is something that happens around that second month where it is, it's your mind plays tricks on you because it's that your old drinking self or that active addiction trying to call you back to such a powerful, powerful thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And have you ever jumped back, you know, speaking of that, you know? Like you're sober for about six months and you go right back again to drink because something happened, you know, you're stressed out, you know? I have not, ha- I have not had a, dr- that can happen to people. And, and, and there is a big percentage of, of it's about 80% of people who enter the world of sobriety will in recovery will eventually re- will relapse. 80%, 80%. That's I know number. it's a big number. And then that's, that's just why we need more help and resources to continue exploring because thing too, with alcohol, it's so embedded and ingrained in our society. And it's such a behavioral thing too, where it's so habitual. And if you've been using it as a coping mechanism for so long, it's just so easy just to snap back into that, to be like, I can go and get a bottle of wine and no one even could know about this. I could sneak this and drink this, or you could go over to your family's house and be like, yeah, after six months, I'm going to drink and nobody's going to care because they could be all addicts as well. So, but yes, but I have not, but it took, like I said, it took me four years to finally quit for good. 
And I just, I just know that I, I don't ever want to go back to a day one again. I don't have it in me to start over. I don't, right. you know, it was, it's hard. It's very hard to overcome alcohol and mm-hmm. or drugs. I don't know. Yes. Part of I don't know. I, it's all, it's well, it, I think it depends on the person and the situation and, and where you come from and who are surrounding you surrounding you and the help that you have. But mm-hmm. drugs are hard. The only thing that's different about drugs and alcohol is alcohol is socially acceptable. Right. It's it's the only substance you have to explain to someone why you're not using. Or as a woman, if you right. if you turn down right. an if you turn down an alcoholic beverage, it's like, well, oh, are you pregnant? Right, right. <laughs> That's the first thing. Never yeah. mind about your health. Maybe I'm taking medication or something, but are you pregnant? <laughs> yeah. Like, are you pregnant? And, you, you know, that's an, an ignorant comment, but that's just because that this topic of conversation has been so hush hush for so long. And then it's like, or if you do have a problem, it's like, well, why can't you just have one? And unfortunately, the addicted mind doesn't work like that, especially when alcohol has already taken over your brain. Right. You said you yeah. started at um, 19 as teenagers. Do you help teenagers as well, being that you started at a young age yourself? I do not. I do not help teenagers. Um, I, I usually end up helping women about, you know, um, I usually help women between like 35 to about 55. I actually, two, two women I just worked with were actually 26 and 28. So, but no, but yes, very good. But one day I would like to go around and talk to some kids about, you know, like how that, how dare program used to be like drugs and alcohol. Yes. Right. Right. And then you said, and then as an an adult, you're like, uh, they were right. Drugs and alcohol aren't cool. <laughs> right. Um, I'm just I'm just sitting here listening. I'm learning so much. Um, I was checking out your page and I was like, this is really amazing. Um, Thank that you. You, have, you know, you do this with the community and um, the ladies in your community. Mm-hmm. And so about how many people do you um, do you do group sessions? Um, I just started. I actually okay. just started about a month ago. I, I formed a, a community. It's a membership, a community where it's focused on um, more personal development oh. and and really getting into and meanings are in there. But the personal development is huge because anyone coming out of an addiction and trans uh, transitioning their lives, it's like for me, I was a I was a thirty year old woman but I felt like a brand new baby. I was, this, I was reborn. If you want to say that, where it's like, now I have to figure out how to live. Right. But what you have to do is you have to build yourself back up into this new way of living. So I focus a lot of, of personal development. We have a book club in there that we just started this month. There'll right. be a topic of the month in April. We've talked about self-esteem and then there's meetings on there. And, um, you know, I have my sister, is in recovery as well. And she runs a meeting on, on Sundays once a month where it's like a a self-care check-in and, and really getting yourself ready for the week or or the month and, and setting yourself up like that. So it's kind of a, there's topics in there too, to help you relearn because a lot of people too, in this area and, and women I have helped, they've gone through a lot of trauma, whether that's physical trauma uh, emotional trauma, uh, there's, there's something that has happened to them right. that has altered the state of their lives and also to why then it was so easy for them to cope and right. then have a problem with drugs and alcohol. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, think, um, you're an alcoholic per se, right? Um, mm-hmm. What will be the first step that you will tell someone you know, to actually start the recovery? What will you tell them? Like, what's the first, second, or third step? You know, is it like to um, contact somebody or call somebody or, you know, what is the first step? Well, I always tell somebody if they're going to quit drinking and like what the first step is, like they need to talk to their doctor about detoxing. That's always, I always throw that in there because I don't know how, how much somebody has been drinking. And if you were like me, I used to lie to doctors. Like when I would go in and they're like, how much do you drink? I'm like, oh, two drinks. And that was a lie. It was like, 
25 and then there would be <laughs> cocaine in there, you know? So it's just like, you could please talk to a doctor about detoxing. But yeah. the second thing I would really, I would just recommend to somebody, it's like, okay, then you're going to start today. You're not, you're going to focus on not drinking today. And then after that, you need to find some form of help or support group, you know, whether it is in 12 steps, whether it is a therapist, whether it is your best friend, someone, a coach, anybody other than yourself, because you have to find somebody who's going to hold you accountable. Right. Because of a lot of us annex, you know, are not held, you know, are not held accountable or we have been enabled which doesn't make the enabler a bad yes. person, right? Mm-hmm. It's just the enabler does not know they think they're protecting them or two that enabler might have their own issues, you know, mm-hmm. and, and there's a lot of codependency or just not knowing the tools on how to help a loved one. So right. enablers are not bad people. They're just, they don't have the, the tools to deal with somebody that they love with an addiction. So really to, to find some type of support and accountability outside of your, your home or yourself. Yeah. So where can um, everyone get your book? Uh, you can find my book. It is available for pre-order on Amazon or on Barnes and Noble. So online. Okay. And what you do right now, you are doing it where in what location? Uh, my stuff is all online. My stuff is virtual. So, so yeah, so we do meetings, um, via zoom and then we talk through a text that is actually, you can get internationally. So, so yeah, so my stuff is all virtual. And they'd be able to actually contact you as a contact a third or fourth person or yeah. Yeah. It it's me and I, I'm big on that. And even too right. on my Instagram page on So Revives, I am I I will never let somebody go through those DMs. I am very involved in those DMs and you know, respond and I don't have anybody who does my emails. I res- I respond. So it's always me that you talk to and who I do it like that because that's also privacy um, for the other person who's reaching out. Right. So So what do you do for fun? <laughs> well, currently I am taking, I have a 19 month old, so he oh, has been, nice. yeah, so he has been my fun, you know, I've been riding that wave and, and really have adjusted to motherhood and, mm-hmm. and that's been my fun. But, you know, now my fun is just getting out of the house and going to get a pedicure. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I also too made it a point this year in 2023, um, to meet up with my girlfriends at least once a month mm-hmm. to do a dinner and right. like we put our phones away right. and just are yes. very focused. Yes. Yeah. So, and we, I'm very proud of us. We have done it now four months in a row, you yeah, know, that's nice. Yay, I like that. <laughs> yeah. And the other night I even stayed out for about five hours and didn't stress. And I just, that's my, my fun currently. Right. So. That's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. You yeah. really have to meet, you have to meet yourself of where you're at in your life. And I think people to put too much pressure on themselves. Like I got to do this and this and this and this. And when in reality, right. your life circumstance isn't going to allow you to do all of that. So just, you kind of got to pick like these little things just to be like, okay, cool. I did that. Yes. Mm-hmm. I aggress a little bit. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. I know you Thank have you. all over there. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, ladies. You have a really nice website. I wanted to tell you, it's very nice. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I um, my girl Taryn did that for me. So, yeah, I like it. Thank you. And a great touching story as well. And thank you. We really appreciate you telling the story. And look at you, you made it through. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate everything. that. And you just smiling and just air to air. So you made it through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why you've been smiling all the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it makes you well, feel good, right? You get joy from helping others through. Yeah. Like the other day, I just talked at a rehab in Hawaii. And it's just like, you yeah. know, it's, it's very, it's very, when you are on, you know, you don't really make it per se. You got to keep going. But when you are on a different side of it where you're not in that struggle anymore and you see that struggle in people's faces or hear it or even by the questions they ask you, like, it's very humbling to then remember where you came from. 
Yes, I like that. You know, so it's just and being able to connect with people who are who are suffering and struggling like that, it it means the world to me because I know what it was like and that there's there you can come out to another side. Yes. That's so wonderful. And we thank you so much. We like to let everyone know where can they find you on, on, on all your platforms, social media, IG, Facebook, where can they find you? Yep. So um, Instagram is at Sober Vibes. Same thing for Facebook. It's all Sober Vibes across the board, except for uh, TikTok. It's Sober Vibes official. And then, of course, too, I have the Sober Vibes podcast that they can tune in. And that's all about um, addiction and recovery. And my sister and I do a show within a show. And we add that because my sister is a recovering crack addict. And she we there's a sister that family element that we do nice. in that show. Nice. Yeah. That is thank amazing. You. Yes, it is. Thank to you. you both, you and your sister. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Congratulations. And thank you so much. And um, we'll touch bases soon. And so it's your podcast. It's your book. And it's book. your website. Yes. Yes. We, and we, it's a 19 month year old. <laughs> yes. 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 He, yes. We're busy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Courtney. We appreciate you. Thank you, ladies. Yes, thank you so much. You have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Do I end? Leave.